What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Thought Provoking Podcast. I'm your host, Will Brown, and I got me a special guest in the building. You want to introduce yourself, lady? Yes. I'm Ambria. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we got us a hot topic today. Are women, black women, really unprotected? That's a good one now. We gonna dive off into that thing, but before we get off into it, I gotta ask you, lady, on a scale of one to ten, rate yourself mentally and business. Hmm. Where you at? Where you at? Where am I at? I would have to say, today I am a strong eight. Today. Today. Yeah, and I thought about that. Okay. I did. Yeah. So Both it, it, mentally and and business, business yes. wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think I'll get along. Since you're at an eight on business, that means you get money. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna lie on the podcast. Just, just gonna lie on the podcast. Eight. Okay, okay, <laughs> what, did man. You say lie? lie on the podcast. Oh, I asked okay. for that loan. You kind of did the oh, a loan. A loan. Oh, a loan. You don't need no loan. <laughs> I, de- I definitely do. Don't let the those that want to support thought provoking podcast <laughs> thought provoking eighty eight. Just so you know, fool, I definitely need it. I definitely need it. But that's good, though. You had an eight on business and an eight mentally. Like, yeah. people have been fluctuating back and forth on the podcast and with so much going on in the world. It's, it's good to see you in a good state right now. Yeah, that's, that's what I would have to say. But, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, if we going, like, to a, a Bill Gates is a 10, you know, like, you know, well, got it all together, be, then you know. I would have to bring it down a notch. I just mean in life in general. I think I'm almost where I'm supposed to be. Okay, I'm yeah. feeling that. <laughs> I'm feeling that. That makes sense. Mentally, I would put myself at a strong seven. Um, Okay. I could always improve, Mm -hmm. but seven is good for me right now. When it comes to business, I put myself at a seven as well. Could always be better. Could always be better. But seven ain't bad. You know, things Mm -hmm. things are going according to plan, I would say, right now. So, mixing it up, getting to the good stuff that everybody want to hear. On social media. What gets on your goddamn nerves? Give it to us. Oh, wow. On social media, what just grinds your gears? (sighs) (laughs) Oh, there's so many things. I would have to say just in like my top five. One of them is when people get on there and say that they want to be left alone. Yeah. That does it for me. (laughs) That does it for me because you got on here. Typed it. Two people, you typed it that you want to be. Who was bothering you before you typed this? Mm-hmm. I don't. Why you ain't telling to them? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that's one of them. That's the only one? No. Give us another good one. Dude, uh, I know you got some good ones because I, I definitely got one that I'm going to piss a lot of oof. people off with. Uh. I probably would have to say people that just get on there and all they do is give advice. That's mm. very irritating because, I mean, I get it, but it's, you know, you just always get on there and you got this old cliche thing that you say or, you know, just something to sound good for some likes. Mm-hmm. I just, I really don't like that. Like, I get it every now and then. Yeah, you want to be positive or whatever, but but just the getting on there, like, treat black men well. Or, I, I, ain't nothing wrong with that. Let's promote that. But I just mean, like, a certain person, like, that's all that they do. They always get on there and just, like, try to give advice to people. It's just like, just relax. I just feel like, People get it, or I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not explaining it right, but I just just relax. I, I think you just kind of feel like it ain't that much positivity in the world. Every it's, it's goddamn not. day, yeah, just every goddamn. It's a lot of people it don't like even that. Be positive. Some of it be negative stuff. Like I, it's some people just talk too much. Talk too damn much. Yeah, just yeah. That's yeah. probably it. Yeah. I got one for you. What's that? People that will take their time. To write out a whole fucking meme that everybody has seen <laughs> yeah. be posted. You will yeah. write this whole thing out. But even worse than that, you got people who will see the meme, but because this person is popular, 
They write oh, it out yeah. and they act like it's hilarious. Oh. They ain't never seen this shit nowhere else. I'll yeah. just be looking like, are you fucking serious? You you literally seen this meme go viral. All the time. This person, and now it's the funniest shit in the world. All like, the get time. the fuck out of here. All like, the time. That, 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 that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a big one there. Another one that get on my nerves when it comes to social media. The women who complain about somebody being in their DM all the time and mm-hmm. then want to show it, you really want attention. You want more people in your DM. It's just personally how I feel. Yeah. Because you could just ignore them, block. Why do you have to announce that these people, <laughs> like, really, everything take an announcement? Just block them. Block them. You got people who will get on here every day and swear up and down, like, oh, I just can't stand for y'all to be in my inbox and this and that. I'm just, mm-hmm. All right, man, like. I understand. Some people go too far and they, you know, don't get it. I understand the whole you done tried 2,345 times to to get attention. I've ignored you. I get it. Yeah. But you got to screenshot everybody that do it. Keep putting it at like. Yeah. Just don't check it. If you're going to act like that. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Let's get off into this Social thing, lady. Social media basically just makes a lot of people feel too important. That's, that's all. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Let's get off into this thing, lady. Let's do it. Are black women really unprotected? That is the narrative that's going around. You see people discussing it on social media, so let's discuss it here. Yeah. What is your take on this? Wow. Well, I went back and forth with myself about this because I've had a little minute, you know, to kind of think on it think on it and i found myself trying to make myself say yes when Mm. in actuality the answer is no for me it's gonna be a no oh um you shocking me right now just for the record really (laughs) yeah i expect you say yeah okay well i'm gonna have to say no and i mean because i had to take myself out of it personally because no matter how I, I had to look at it as a whole and there's so many different factors like that go into me saying no because um uh, i would have to say from like our younger generation like you know 20s going on up um it's just like with black people because this is what we're talking about mm-hmm. you know um we got a lot of single family homes okay for one so i feel like that in itself is not protection you know like the man you make the child with this woman or whatever you it's okay if you don't work or whatever but for one it's hard to protect if you're not in the house okay so that's one thing and you know also the children are not being protected if dad is not in a home so that's the children and the mother Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one way that I looked at it, that we aren't really being protected as much as other races. Um, And then, okay, so then we go into like the 20s. Uh, For some reason, I mean, it's not everyone because I hate saying all, but, you know, a lot. We uh, go out and we experiment, have fun or whatever, mostly in our 20s. And it's really mostly in the black community where we go out and club party or whatever and we kill each other. Mm-hmm. And it's mostly in our 20s. So then that's another era right there where I feel like women are not being protected because when we go out, us women, we shouldn't, men either, but us women shouldn't worry about dodging bullets and stuff or, you know, being out with your man and something's going to happen and, you know, a fight or anything break out and you're unprotected so you know i feel like that it's just it's a number of things that i feel like we're not being protected and then just going farther uh i feel like well in statistics they're saying that you know it's moving up that now there are more uh families being made or whatever come to date you know than it was a few years ago Because it was like mostly black people didn't have, it was mostly single family homes. But now they're starting to have more families. So I'm hoping that this continues that way. But I just feel like, you know, me being in my 30s, I'm not going to say how old I am. But I'm just saying, even now, 
the single women we're still being is unprotected you know even in relationships i just feel like the men now they don't feel like they have to protect the women as much as they did because the women are more um masculine if that makes sense so it's hard for the man to just you know be the shield of the family like they used to be I'm trying not to be all over the place. No, no, you you need to get because <laughs> it is a to dig into no. It, it's like. true because it's a topic that you can't just pinpoint one particular thing yeah. because that was the question that I was going to ask. I see so many people get on social media, and that's that's the that's the trend and the trendy thing to say. Oh, black women are not protected by our black men or men in general. And my my real question is, well, what does that look like? When you say, I want to be protected, what does that look like? Because that's a different scenario for everybody. Mm -hmm. Some women feel like you're protecting them if somebody disrespects you Mm -hmm. and you will smith them. You slap the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. Some people feel like, oh, protecting me is not cheating on me. Mm -hmm. And so I I will say this. I've had mixed feelings on this topic. I'm kind of going to be. On the 50-50 side, you know, I I feel like it's okay to not just have one side fits everybody because everybody's scenario is different. I do feel like it's something that's just trendy. A lot of people are just hollering this shit because, oh, I've seen it on social media. It's the hot thing to say. And I'm just going to act like it apply to me. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of women that I do feel like are protected by men. Mm -hmm. If it's not. Who y'all in these relationships with? Y'all just in relationships with men that y'all feel like ain't protective of y'all mentally, emotionally. Mm -hmm. And if it comes to physical, that too. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is a lot going on where I think people get upset and don't want to hear the truth is there's a certain type of woman Mm -hmm. that we let the disrespect slide to when we don't have that type of bond with you, when we don't look at you as valuable to us Mm -hmm. then i think that we let the bullshit ride Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't don't want to hear like what you mean by valuable to us there's a certain type of woman that we look at as kind of the around the way girl Mm -hmm. you know the one that's just like ah whatever you know the one that ah bitch fuck it up i seem cool and trendy seem cool and trendy but we don't want that shit when you the one out there you talking shit to men You think you a man. You out there talking shit, talking reckless, all these threats of what you will do, who you will go get. And then he all of a sudden show you, I'm going to put you back in your place of being a woman. Now you feel like you need to protect me. You need to he disrespect. No, no. Going to be Billy Badass. Yeah. There's also a group of women who, and it's sad to say, jump in there. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. I feel like. That's the root of the problem because it's a reason why women have become masculine like that. I mean, why? Because I mean, I hate to say it because it comes off as an excuse, but it's really not because really it is a reason why they have become that hard and tough. Why? Because they've had a hard life and you know, I mean, that still doesn't mean that they shouldn't be protected. Sometimes it takes a man to pull them to the side and be like, hey, you know, I mean, this may be a fantasy to be like, you don't, you know, you don't have to act like that or relax, you know. But when women jump hard like that or whatever, men automatically go into even more masculine. Oh, you know, well, because it's on. Yeah. But really calm that woman down because, you know, you could whoop her. It, all you got to do is, and it's over. So it's no reason for you to up jump like that, really, to women. But, but I just feel like, see, that's a whole nother conversation. But I just feel like it's all conditioning, and you know, men already, black men already have a lot of different things and adversities that they have to you know, overcome or whatever. And sometimes I feel like women get pushed to the side of that. And that is why some women are more 
masculine they feel unprotected because i mean hello if you even go back to slavery men watch their wives and women be drug away and kids done with forever and there's nothing that they could do you know like their whole masculinity was taken away so i just feel like the women who this happened to even generations down the line you know they still had to fend for themselves and they didn't have that protection you know, like other race. Now, don't get me wrong. This has happened in other races too. It's a very touchy subject. I just feel like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I think as black men, you need to be softer towards women. They need to tone it down, and then women will tone it down. But because black men are so hostile, most of them, a lot of them, it causes black women to be that way. And it causes them to feel unprotected. I think a lot of guys, though, to be honest, I think a lot of guys, if you look at the surface of what's on social media, mm -hmm. again, I feel a lot of women go with what's trendy. You know, everybody wants to show their independence, how mm -hmm. successful they are. I don't need a man. I can mm -hmm. do this on my own. Right. I got my own. But I'm not the forty dollar holler girl. Absolutely. All of that is beautiful. No, it's, it's fine. Not. No, it's, it's it's beautiful that you know if you feel like you're not the forty dollar holler, oh, like that yeah, that no, part right yeah, there. You know, what I'm not. Saying? <laughs> yeah, not, even no. though you know it's a place for the forty dollar holler. Oh, you know, yeah. it's a place for them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, but when you do so much, my thing is it's okay to be a strong, independent woman. But the issue becomes when you feel the need, you have to put it in everybody's face nonstop. True. Be that way and don't you don't have to keep announcing it. Every day you don't have to get on social media talking about you pay your own bills, you do this, you do yeah. I don't need a man for this, I don't need a man for that. That's when men come back with the whole, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We'll shovel your own fucking snow. Oh, fix your own fucking car. Not saying you can't take it to a shop, but you know, typically certain roles that men would have mm -hmm. that they wouldn't have a problem. When you're pushing something in somebody, I don't need you, I don't need you, then it's like Okay, cool. Yeah, but every action is, you know, warrants a reaction. And it's a reason why women do, black women do that. You don't think? Where did that come from? Why do they feel like they need to be so independent? I do believe that men have dropped the ball as far as stepping up for women. But I think that's <laughs> a difference with stepping up for them versus, you know, basically looking at it saying you're not protected. Because I think now it's just a trendy thing that we are seeing. Like, hmm. who pushed this narrative? I, I would like somebody to tell me exactly like, oh, my homegirl, such and such, she's with such and such or, mm -hmm. you know, she's just not. Like, what does it look like? Who's not being protected? Well, I, can, I can tell you, so you what, you know, and this is just. I think it could possibly be a, you know, universal to most black women. Um, being protected, no, it's not just about physically, no. oh, uh, you know, Will Smith slapping mm -hmm. or whatever. No, um, mentally, you want to make sure that you are protected to where you can uh, speak and say your piece. Um, you know, have differences, but be able to communicate that to each other. That's protection in one. You know, because a lot of women, you get with these men and they don't know how to communicate. That's a big factor. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And that is very important in protection because that is mentally draining. When you cannot get your point across, you can't ever come to a conclusion because this man don't know how to communicate. So that's unprotected. That's true. You know, um, as far as, like I said, with the kids, you know, we got a lot of men out here. I'm not saying all they want to do is screw and make babies, but it's like it ain't no thing with black people with having babies. I mean, that's what we were made for. Well, not made for, but that's what they used us for. You know, that's what we were known for mm -hmm. because we're so hyper-sexually active. You know, and I feel like that's still going on right now. Like, I've never... I have one child. One. And I'm not saying that it... To each his own. But at the same time marriage is very 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 important it doesn't totally solidify it but you know it's more of a chance that your 
mate or husband or even if y'all do divorce he is still going to take care of those kids you know what i'm saying but now everybody you know you got a baby with john you got a baby with uh you know jake you got a baby with each man that you get with you don't need to have a baby bow you know what i'm saying or don't give that same man multiple babies if he's giving you problems that's he's unpro that's unprotecting don't i don't get that and men let it happen now I, they say women choose who have they have a baby by. They damn sure do. They sure do. So I feel like, yes, that's something that us black women drop the ball on. But also men need to pick their selection and women need to be better. You know, if you see that this woman is not the one for you or you don't really even feel it like that. All y'all do is have sex all the time. Why? Hello? That's, you know, dropping the ball on that. You know, my feelings kind of hurt because I do got two kids. And, oh, my you know, God. That, that was my scenario. <laughs> I was with two women that I know I had no business being with. So you kind of hurt my feelings right now. I feel like you're pointing the finger at me right now. Oh just just for the record, I want that to be known. I will never have her own again because oh she's starting God. to. <laughs> he's lying, but he's a fantastic father. And he does not drop the ball at all. It's totally different. Girl, let me turn you your mic up. Let me turn your mic up. Say that again, girl. Because trust me, some of these women need to hear this. You know, one in particular that i have a child with you oh know but God. i understand oh, see, look, i don't even know who she is but she's gonna be like god damn it i don't like her <laughs> hey, you know no but I, I i've annoyed you for before you even had kids and i know you do your yeah, yeah. with the babies yeah so I, I, I guess, and that's why I told you I'm on a 50-50, because a lot of points that you made as far as, you know, me and not stepping up in the household, you know, women getting left behind with these responsibilities, it, it, it is a lot of them. But I think that going into to that scenario deeper, mm -hmm. we got to start looking at separating the men from the boys. Yeah. I have an issue with this narrative that's mm -hmm. out there being applied to men when in reality if you look at certain people's life it's like no nah, you complaining about your treatment or mistreatment from a boy versus right. a man and when i say that how you say it now this is this is 100 percent true most men have never been taught how to communicate i have never been sat down in my younger years to say listen you know, this is how you express your feelings and stuff, because I've said this on the podcast before. Most men equate mm -hmm. feelings with weakness. Right. Most of us do. So now the whole going back and forth and telling you how I feel, you know, that that's a a, a ball that has been dropped. Yeah, I've heard that. With us growing up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people so say that. And, and I'm, I don't believe that it is. But yeah, I'm saying no. that's how we most of the time are taught. You being a little boy, you get to crying and stuff. Your parents tell you, you know, stop crying. Stop being a little girl. Well, you automatically assume you have to be tough all the time. You can't express yourself. So, yeah, I do believe that a ball has been dropped when it comes to that. But mm -hmm. I've seen this post on that literally today. I've seen this girl going back and forth with a guy and she was just talking about enjoying her life nowadays. You know, she's figuring her situation out. Mm -hmm. I've seen this guy like inquire about what her qualities are mm -hmm. for a guy to get with her mm -hmm. and. She didn't list them, but she just basically let him know we've had this conversation before. In the midst of all of that, she let it be known there's a lot of nice guys out there who tries to get with her and talk to her. She don't want them. Mm -hmm. She wants the bad guy. Mm -hmm. You know, that plays a role. So when you get the bad guy and then the shit ends bad, yeah. don't be the one hollering, Oh, black women are not protected because oh, it's like, yeah, no. you know what you went after. You know what type of guy you went after. Yeah. You know, I, I've never seen a guy just raise his hand and, and keep it real and say, yeah, I ain't shit. But you want to fuck with me? Oh, I have. Oh, well, you a bad. Mo What's <laughs> his name? What's his name? It's What's his name? Facebook. They do it all the time. All you got to do is scroll. You see them talk about ain't shit stuff all day. They ain't doing shit. They don't look like shit. What's and his then name? They, they go. And then you got all type of females all in their shit. We need a name and just so we can spot it. It's too many of them. Oh, man, I could read them. It's a lot it's, of them, it's, I'm it's sure. Terrible. Yeah, but, but not only that. And I don't just mean the bad guys either because this ain't just about, you know, the uh, the undesirables. This, I mean, even because, of course, we got a lot of marriages and 
you know, all of that amongst us mm-hmm. black people. So I I just feel like, uh, yeah, we are protected in some ways. You know, I know a lot of married couples. They're happy and whatever. I don't mean them. I just mean as a whole. My answer is no, because I feel like it is way more unprotection than any other race pretty much because most other races women conform Mm -hmm. way easier than we do so that's why i feel like it's not as easy to protect us black women maybe y'all start acting like white women well do y'all act like white men sometimes when we yeah. in the corporate setting, you Some know. Some of y'all. I mean, <laughs> when we in the corporate it, setting. It ain't even just white men. It's Arabs. You know, like, their women, they don't even come out of their hijab. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, there's, it's very different. Chinese, those women are totally different. We don't have, in America here, black women, us black people, we don't have like our culture here we are just like all over the place so you know i just feel like it's that's where that plays into part so what what would protection look like to you in in the perfect world in the perfect scenario perfect relationship perfect everything which we know everything ain't perfect but what would that protection look like to you uh i would just have to say Huh. Good one. Well, because I don't want to, I don't want to sound like cliche or you know just your personal like opinion. Give it to us. I mean, it's just being protected as a black woman is just being able to be a soft black woman in essence and. A man being able to respect that, Mm -hmm. listen, understand like what that is. We got a lot of stuff in common and a lot of things that we have to overcome together. So I just feel like, you know, protection from your black man would be to understand that. And sometimes, you know, it may not always be easy, but they really need to... uh, how can I say just because I want to just say just protect the black woman but that it's so it's, it's just not it's not enough it's just like you it's it's certain things that you have to do like stop making babies out of wedlock like just understand what the purpose of a woman is for and go back to that and start there and I know like sometimes it's okay to have fun in your 20s and to grow up and whatever, but you don't have to totally disrespect women all the time. Or, you know, I know we got a lot of rap culture amongst us black, uh, uh, our black, you know, our culture or whatever. It, that's what we dominate in. And it seems like it's like our persona to demean women. Mm-hmm. That's what you know it's a big part of it so even sometimes if you see the rap songs or whatever but women got to help that too you yes. know they need to thank take you. their thank you. part in it as well you know stop being so sexually subjective and i mean it's okay to be sexy ain't nothing wrong with that but the more that you make yourself uh you know uh what's the word uh, shoot, because I don't want to offend anybody. No, but offend the, them. the more that you make yourself like, uh, shoot, unworthy, you know what I mean? Like doing things, objectifying yourself to just the world, period. Like you have to relax. You got to, if that's what you want, if you want to be protected, you got to act like you want to be. You know, mm-hmm. if you don't, you don't, because you can be out here rah rah, like, oh, I don't need this, I don't need that, and blah blah blah. And unfortunately, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. So, it, it takes two to do that. I feel like we gotta work together. But as far as just, you know, the man doing better, 
you know, y'all supposed to be the leader. So I feel like y'all got to take control. First. And I'm glad you brought that up because I want to want to rep for the men a little bit. OK, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to uh-uh. put it out certain conversations that I have. So <laughs> amongst my no, seriously, <laughs> amongst my guys. Yeah, I have real life conversations with fellas and I am the guy that sit there and say, when you want things to change, you know, a lot of people love to go with the whole ain't no good women, ain't no whatever. Oh, but please. certain things we have to stop adding to to make the situation worse. Yeah. I get on guys and I tell them, you too old to be calling women bitches and hoes. Yeah. You too old. But had I never said that to a lot of people, they would continue because it's trendy. Yeah. A lot of women are cool with it. Some people say like, oh, I don't know if somebody said it. But most people go along with it. Like mm-hmm. you said, the music and everything. Yeah. I educate mm-hmm. knowledge that I done got over the years, conversations I done had with women. I spread it to some fellas. There's a lot of people who didn't know nothing about what love languages are. So when you're talking about mm-hmm. emotionally and, you know, having this conversation piece, I have these discussions with guys. You know, I simply tell guys, you know, if you're hitting every checkpoint that a woman requires of you you can get so much more out of her oh yeah a lot of guys don't think like that a lot of guys just like okay another thing that i tell guys and i'm gonna be the first one to say i don't always take my own advice but i do put the shit out there i got some cold advice for people if you continue to do the same things that you did to once get this woman and you continue these things your relationship will last so much longer a woman will tell you what she wants yeah. all the time she'll tell you what she wants. you know you listen to some of the r&b music mm-hmm. it details what women want what they're looking for y'all share their statuses all of that so i put guys on game when it comes to certain things like this to make them better men for their women mm-hmm. i've expressed to a lot of the guys that i deal with let the fellas start getting together mm-hmm. let's start having realistic conversations let's talk about where we struggle with so that way we're not just constantly, you know, putting up this wall when our women is, you know, trying to express stuff to us or we're really going through stuff. And now you feel like you're unprotected because you're in the situation alone. I don't want to communicate with you. I'm just shutting down. I have these dialogues yes. with guys, but enough of us are not doing it. So I do down. believe that Oof. women are not privy to certain situations like this that go on. Because, mm-hmm. again, I have these conversations with me. I keep it real and sit there and say you know, when the finances, you know, are good, that don't mean just blow everything and, you know, you got to buy the hottest, this, that, you know, think about a future. You know, have certain conversations with your woman about, like a lot of people say, just an example, a lot of people sit there and say, oh, I ain't going 50-50 with no man. It's a man's job to do this, that, and other. I tell guys, hey, man, listen, if that's how you want to roll, that's cool. But I'm all for you telling that woman, hey, look here. We don't necessarily have to go 50 50, Mm -hmm. but look here, I'm going to pay that mortgage. You put another mortgage payment down towards the principal. We'll pay this motherfucker down so quick. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's a whole different mindset with you and this woman when it comes to this relationship. Yeah. Now she feels like, oh, he is protecting me because not only is he being a provider, but he's dropping knowledge on me. Like he's really showing me that he's stepping up and knowing exactly what he's talking. I have these dialogues. Mm -hmm. With my homeboys. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually happening. I just think that, again, certain women are falling victim to them picking the wrong type of guy and expecting. And this is just my opinion. I know people going to get offended by it. You cannot get nice guy results from street people. If that's all you want, you know, the roughneck, the whole, the thug, the gangster, that you think is the shit you yes. can't get nice guy results out of them but then don't bash men and say oh men dropping the ball they're not protecting black women when you picking the wrong type of person but there's so many street men out here and i let that life go a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> i did but i'm just saying it that still shouldn't be a reason why it still shouldn't be a, the. Oh no! It really guys, is though. But the street guys are so different nowadays than the ones back in the day. It's very different because even them they used to protect. Even then they did. I'm telling you, this whole era is so you think different. So? Oh, do I think? I've been fortunate enough. Uh, I have 
two older sisters. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I mean, I, I'm i very aware of things that are going on. That's just how I've always been. And I just, I can tell the difference. You know, even the street guys back in the day, they used to take care of the community. They used to take care of the hood. You know what I'm saying? And whatever women they were with, they put them up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we still got some that do it now, but it's it's just very different now. All the hoods, they be run down. You know, the kids don't come outside no more. There is no block parties. You know, it's not it's not like it used to be. So, you know, I feel like <laughs> a lot of niggas is gay. Ooh. Not that there's anything wrong with it if you're gay, but no, you know, not at all. You know? Not in that way. I mean, like yeah, they they they, they swing for the other fence. Yeah, they got got some secret stuff going on, you know, because they act like they don't value the women and you know stuff like that anymore. That's what I mean. You know, absolutely nothing wrong with being gay. You tell your truth and you be <laughs> that way, but don't be out here doing things differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -mm, I don't like it. I don't like the streets. It's not what it used to be. It's terrible, and I don't want no parts of it. But you know, at, at the at the end of the day, it's probably best that shit is fucked up as it is because in, in reality like we try and find the good out of bad situations yeah. you know I, i'm glad that a lot of stuff is so watered down because in in yeah. reality i think that that's why you have so many people talking about there's a different type of guy out here most yeah. of us try to basically do the exact same thing that we saw in the streets the way they were because i've had these conversations too that 90s era, oh, that was a whole nother monster. A lot of them sat there and let it be known, like, oh, we ain't take chicks on dates and stuff. Like, that's where that whole, you want to ride around and get a bottle type thing. You want to, you know, you smoke. That's where a lot of that stemmed from. You know, a lot of people sit there and think that everybody was just going on trips. and no. But it wasn't like that. You no, might have got some Jordans, got some shoes. You're right. Yeah, you're right. About but you weren't really like yeah. you weren't really getting that type of lifestyle and in in my opinion the protection more so was hmm. oh if you trying to fuck with my girl oh it's on because you know my reputation but were you really protected when the more money you get you feel like you entitled to every other woman so yeah you is main but how many other is out there mm -hmm. so were you really protected yeah as far as can't nobody come fuck with my woman to disrespect her. But what about emotionally? You know what this man is out there doing. So right. he's not protecting you emotionally. when it That's correct. But look at the type of guy you chose, though. Yeah. That's a street brother. So for me, I'm glad that it all kind of like that. Whether whether it's a different breed of street guy now. Yeah. Or, or the, I'm glad that it all I just feel started. like it's all become like terrible. Like, you know, like street guys is just way overrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, but I just I honestly do believe that there's a specific type of woman yeah. that's not protected. Yeah, but it's not the the type of woman that yeah. she's career oriented. She got her head on straight, and she's the woman that's not trying to be what everybody else is. You know, you showing your ass. You got your ass on the sink. Take like why but are those we doing are the that? Women that I'm talking about because oh I'm we ain't protecting even, them. We ain't protecting them. No, I'm not saying. But those are the ones that I'm really talking about because you got the ones that uh you know act like they w don't want to be they independent this and that whatever or the ones that shaking their ass out there doing this and that not to say that they shouldn't be protected but i am talking mostly about the women who are hard working you know this and that just not married yet you know out here dating or with men or have a boyfriend or whatever i feel like those are the ones you know like are not as protected you know like of course the other ones too but that's what really matters the women that are trying and then you know they're not being protected it's like i just feel like a lot of men their dialogue like the communication and all of that stuff that's where the unprotection comes in at yeah we got those other aspects so all of those are like in a different category mm -hmm. in you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got the street guys that don't protect, but that's they dealing with different type of women. Then you got, you know, but I 
also the hardworking women that are looking for a decent guy to settle down with or whatever and they running across these men that you know play games and this and that or not being honest or they get in relationships and you know men don't know how to communicate i just feel like it's all of those so let me ask this then yeah. Do you think that these serious conversations are being had before you get to a relationship? Because for me, I would think mm-hmm. that as a woman, if I'm getting to know you, you're asking a certain questions, you you know, you're getting that fill out period. It, it These questions must not be getting asked. It, it got to be a void for it to lead all the way into you being in a relationship. How do you get all the way in a relationship without knowing this guy can't hold a conversation? You know, he's not doing anything outside of the norm. You know, you're going to take me to Fridays and Chili's. Because you know, shit you don't, don't get real until about six months in or more. And it take you that long now in 2022 to, to start figuring people out? I don't believe that it do. Yeah, I mean... It doesn't have to, but I'm talking about like when things start getting extremely serious. Yeah, I feel like the first three months are always like the honeymoon phase. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we going out. We are pretty much agreeing on the things that we like and figuring each other out or whatever. But then after that is when until you damn near move with somebody and y'all have to make these uh decisions together and different stuff like that you can't do that in the beginning until you start to make these decisions and stuff with somebody or you're around their children and different stuff like that so that's when i feel like the you get to see somebody's true colors i don't believe it take that long i honestly don't i honestly don't i I think it's we are so cu- accustomed to dealing with people and we we are going through the motions with the fluff. What's your favorite color? Yeah, my favorite on, color. Man. Excuse but, my but, language. But that's what's going on. No. And that's why that that's exactly what's going on. Because no. I'll give you a prime example. I talked to an individual and she was a beautiful girl. Mm-hmm. Got her own career. Good. Yeah, mm-hmm. she got her own career. Mm-hmm. Takes care of her own child. Mm-hmm. All of this kind of stuff. But it didn't take me long to realize, because I'm a big conversation per- okay. person. It didn't take me long to realize she was an individual that wasn't for me strictly because she doesn't like anybody to disagree with her. Okay. She feels she has to be right. And even when you prove her wrong, just in regular conversation, she's upset. She's hot. Okay. Now she won't talk to you no more. She won't deal with you no more. And don't even tell you like, hey, this is what you did to offend me or I didn't like this part that was sick. Mm-hmm. You have to fucking figure it out. It didn't take me six months to realize yes. she is not the woman for me. <laughs> it did not take me that because I have real conversations that yeah. most people. I don't give a fuck what your favorite color is. Yeah. I don't really give a fuck what your favorite restaurant is. Like, that's not anything that I give a shit about. I'm asking you see your stuff. What do you see yourself in the next three to five years? Yeah. Where? You know, mm-hmm. have you thought about. If your job shut down, what else would you do? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about following your passion, your dreams? Have you ever pursued them? Have you ever talked to somebody to see, hey, is this really possible for this to happen? What's stopping you? I have real conversation. It don't take you six months, but we're going through with the bullshit fluff. Oh, girl, he take me. And I'm going to tell you, women are getting suckered by the simplest, stupidest shit. A motherfucker take you out to eat somewhere you ain't accustomed to going. Mm-hmm. You know, he send you these text messages. The the first thing y'all do, y'all go to y'all home, girl. Girl, let me tell you. Man, he doing this, he doing that. Girl, you got you a good one. Y'all home girls hype it up. Girl, you got you a good one. Girl, you got you a good one. Before you know it, I'm in the door. You don't really know shit about me. Yeah. I don't. I ain't trying to really know shit about you other than when, when I'm going to get that, you know what. Mm-hmm. I, you on the time clock. <laughs> Women do this shit to themselves. Like, Literally, women, it don't take that fucking long to see through somebody. You're right. You are absolutely right. It is all about the right questions and having the right conversations. You are absolutely right. I'm not taking that from you, but I'm still saying, I don't care if I have a good conversation with you within two weeks. We didn't talk about X, Y, Z. I don't care because still a few months from now, when you're not giving you might not be able to give me the right answer or you know something else may come about that we didn't talk about or it's just different situations because no matter what we talked about 
living through the situations you know what I'm saying? Going through something mm -hmm. is when you can tell how a person's character is. That's true. So that's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, you could ask all the right questions on the first damn date. Mm -hmm. And they might answer it like Johnny on the spot. But six months from now or three months from now when you bring him around your child and he say some dumb ass shit. Now you're like, oh, I can't deal with him. So it's going to take me, you know, different circumstances and things or whatever that I need to see how you're going to react to for me to know, you know, uh, okay. That's true. Oh, that's true. Okay. That, that, that's definitely true. I just don't think it takes six months. And, oh, and it might not take women six. have way more power than what they think that they have. Like literally they definitely do, but they, they don't know that. They definitely do. They don't I, know that. Look, that's why I, back into the conversation of, unprotected that's why i said women black women they really need to tone it down you know if that is what you want if that's what you want to feel protected by a black man you definitely got to change your circumstance you got to change your actions or whatever because if you are not being respected or protected by a black man is i'm not saying there's something totally that you're doing wrong but you can change it mm -hmm. so but in a nutshell the protection of the black man they still have to do the protecting you know what i'm saying so yeah it's it's still gotta go hand in hand but if you are feeling that way if you are with somebody and they are not protecting you in a way that you want to be protected i feel like remove yourself from that situation and Either that man is going to conform and come down and start to level with you if they care. Or you move on. And then maybe that will show him the next person that I need to be more this way. So you're a black woman. Mm -hmm. Got a good paying job. You're an entrepreneur. Young. Independent. You fully take care of your child without any help. Well, I ain't going to say what I'm because I don't know your personal business, but yeah. you don't need the help. I'll put that out there. You don't need the Ooh, help. I co-parent with her, okay. my daughter's father, yes. With all this going for yourself, mm -hmm. are you protected? Do you feel protected as a black woman? You, you personally, do you feel protected as a black woman? Me personally, personally. I would. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got to put you on the no, spot. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Um. In certain ways, yes and no. I will have to say it's probably more mm, like a 60-40. 60-40. I will have to say. 60 um, yes? 60 yes. Okay, 40% no. 40% no. Um, I mean, of course, it's for my own personal reasons, but um, I will, I feel like, when I do make my decision, once I get married, yes, it will be, I feel protected. But as of right now, I work hard. I do like um, a lot of things that I feel like if I was totally protected that I would not have to do. You know what I mean? But that's me being an unmarried woman. You know, I live separate from you know, the person that I'm dating or whatever, you know, those type of things. So at Johnny on the spot, yeah, if I need something done or whatever, sometimes I just have to figure it mm -hmm. out myself. So, you know, in that aspect, yeah, I feel a little unprotected, but, you know, but, um, no, I don't feel like, you know, that's why I had to take myself out of it because I don't totally feel unprotected, but I feel like it could be better. Okay. I'm glad you said that. Now, let's get into that. There's so much division when it comes to these type of conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, once a woman says the black woman is unprotected, you're going to have black men who are going to come out and say, oh, you full of shit. Oh, y'all this. Y We're going to do this back and forth thing. Mm -hmm. How do we change this whole narrative of black women not being protected? Okay. What areas would you say us men, we need to step up and do better in? Um, well, it kind I kind of touched on it a little earlier. The biggest thing I would have to say is 
well, I feel like for one, it starts at home. Stop making all of these babies out of wedlock. That's the biggest thing, you know, and dividing all of these single family homes. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, if you're going to go and lay down with a woman, that's your business. But creating life and knowing that you're probably not going to be there, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. That's like, that's what I, I have a huge problem with. And that's why I haven't had any more children. I'm with you on that's that. That's my I don't biggest want no more. thing. <laughs> I'm with you on so, that. So, you know, I hit my head and I, mm -mm. um, other than that, just listening. Because I feel like a lot of these women, even if they are, I don't care if you, it is the twerk mania queen or whatever, whoever, I feel like still. Whatever man she chooses to go and be with or mm -hmm. lay down with or whatever, he still has enough power. I'm not saying that you've got to be Captain save a hoe, but I just mean I feel like you have the power to tone that woman down a little bit or like just give her protection, like make her feel a little more than just a piece of meat because some women don't even care. You know what I'm saying? They know that that's what it is. And I feel like that's sad as hell. It is. For you to just know that you are, I'm sorry to say, a fuck. And I don't think that that's okay. You know, that is the most, I mean, I know that's what prostitutes do, but a lot of women would, you know, fight you if you told her that that's what she was. But she is. Because if you can go in... You know, you just want to know, oh, he got money, so that's why you're going to go lay down with him. That's what it's going to be. So, you know, but I do feel like even it's hard to put that together because obviously those type of people don't have that mind frame where mm -hmm. they even want to be the protector and she don't want to be protected. So how do you make that? Well, you know. I think this is a start. You know, you're, yeah. you're voicing your opinion on a podcast. We're going to put this out, get people's opinions, their thoughts. And again, along the lines of what I told you, I also do for myself. Me and the fellas, we have real dialogue with yeah. each other. You know, because again, I was literally, I mean, it's, it's shameful to say. My oldest son's mother, I used to call her bitches all the time when we get into it. Jesus Christ. Early 20s, like any yeah. argument, I call her bitches and this like and that. it. And I've been with a man that called me one. You and, know what and I'm one saying? day I just stopped. I, it, nobody was telling me like, you know, bro, you should. I just one day stopped like enough is enough. But I also give this information to guys, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what age, you know, you ain't never too old to stop learning anything. I also take advice too, you know. We did this whole situation where couples get together and mm -hmm. we start to talk about, you know, your shortcomings, what you're struggling in. Also, what's good in your relationship versus just saying, oh, throw the relationship away. You yeah. know, changing the mindset of each individual. That's how we get this thing back together. Because, again, if we just keep going with the whole black women ain't protected, mm -hmm. all we're going to do is keep a lot of division amongst yeah. ourselves and we're never going to get the results that either of us are looking for because once you say it to me then i'm gonna start attacking you then yeah. i'm gonna start attacking a particular type of woman then you're gonna start being on the defensive end and start attacking a particular type of man we're just gonna go back and forth mm -hmm. without getting the results instead of just having a realistic conversation like we are doing right. even if you have to agree to disagree as long as you putting the information out there as a man, I can hear what you said and say, oh, OK, so now I know if I want to get with this type of woman, I need to have A, B and C. I need to act like this. And I want to also throw this out there, too. Please, please, please. When it comes to women, stop getting on these platforms talking about I don't have the time to teach a grown man this. that, and No, you, you do. Yeah. You do. You need the time because. Yeah. I don't know how to love you the way you want to be loved until it's taught to me. I can yeah. love you the way I, and I'm guilty of that. That's what I, I love people the way I want to love them. Not yeah. necessarily the way they want to be but loved. you got to be willing to You got to be willing to. Yeah, you definitely got to be willing to. So I think that that's definitely a, a great start 
mm-hmm. us getting on this platform, us having realistic conversations because yeah. we ain't oh, shouting and screaming. Oh, fuck what you talking about. You wrong. It's not yeah. all of that. Like, it's a realistic conversation. And I appreciate the fact that although you're saying you don't feel like it's protection and you giving these examples, your conversation is not just based on all mm-hmm. oh, men ain't shit. No. They just ain't stepping up doing nothing. You're you're also calling out the women. So it's it's also a good feeling to me and to realize, well, damn, yeah, we can step up. But she's also pointing out the fact that women can step up, too. I Absolutely. think that's going to be a huge help. Absolutely. So yeah. is there anything else you'd like to add to this portion of the conversation? Mm, no, okay. not really. No, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. But I want to switch it up a little bit. Okay. You've watched the podcast. Mm -hmm. Don't know how many episodes, but I'm sure you've caught a couple of them. I would hope if you haven't, just go back and, you know, hit that, hit that, that link, you know. (laughs) Yeah. With the episodes that you have seen Mm -hmm. as a person that has supported, now a person that's an actual guest. Mm -hmm. What type of content would you like to see more of? Hmm. More of, um. Shoot. I try and touch on some of everything, but oh, you know. Oh man. Um <laughs> I mean there's quite a few. Um I would probably have to say I would like to see something. Well, of course, okay, so one would probably as far as like a dating one. A dating one. Um just dating now now versus you know uh probably what 10 years ago so the because traditional the versus biggest. now yeah traditional versus now um i probably will also want to see <laughs> uh hmm. oh, this one about to get good <laughs> this one about to get good you had to let that one marinate a little bit no <laughs> No, that's okay. I don't want to. No. <laughs> you, you know what it is. So go on. Give, this is the Thought Provoker Podcast. We need this information. Go on. Give it to us. Because it might be in the no. works. You just never know. Oh, I mean, well, it's like it's different stuff. I mean. Okay. Pushing the envelope. Which envelope? <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners want to know. <laughs> no, Our listeners want to know. No, I mean, like, you know, um, I would like to see one, you know, about, um, you know, like sexual encounters. Like, what made you uncomfortable, like, in a relationship if you got with somebody and they pushed the envelope? Okay. Like, okay, that was too much and maybe it was a deal breaker for them. I mean, that's that's just one. I would like to see one. This This might be weird. Because I have a dog, and I love my dog like a child. Mm. I would love to see one about our fur babies. Mm. <laughs> Why not? Is that weird? <laughs> I, I hate dogs. Okay, and then another one. I would like to see uh, one about, because, I mean, I can relate to this. Women in a male-dominant industry. Mm-hmm. That's That's very important to me. You know, just the whole uh, temperature there with that. How does that work? You know, I mean, I got a lot of different things. You, I, you, you okay with me putting you on blast a little bit? So I had an episode of the ups and downs of women in business that you were supposed to be a part of. And uh, you couldn't make it. So we kind of touched on that. On we kind of touched on that. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yes. That is true. Yes. We so, might need to revisit that, that conversation. That was, entrep- that was business. I'm talking about women in a male dominant because I, I work in a male. Yeah. And it is very male dominant. And it is very strict. Oh, my God. It is. It's a story. Oh, I know. I've done my time. Yeah. I know it. You know it. Mm-hmm. As soon as y'all hit the door, it's another world. It's different. Don't let you be attractive, Lord. Mm -hmm. It's it's a mess. Oh, they be flirting with you, flirting with you. No, well. What department you say you in again? (laughs) Just so we know. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, but I'll tell you this. Once you holler harassment, motherfuckers shut it down quick. Because they know. They will get your ass up out of there. You don't even have to go there, though. You know, 
the women they use it to their advantage a little bit but to be serious you know you shut that down you could shut that down quickly and they treat you with respect yeah. they do i tell you i almost got my ass fired some years ago oh damn i probably had 10 years on the job i'll tell you something i did <laughs> see that's this is a good one this is a good one yeah so there was a young young black lady that she came to our department she was cool but everybody was catering to her like you would lower the crane and used to have to take these heavy chains off. And again, it's a male dominated field. Mm-hmm. But everybody used to cater to her, take the chains off, do all this kind of stuff. And I ain't had no problem with it. But her mouth used to piss me off. Like Uh-oh. she was one of them that, you know, oh, well, you know, I never have to ask for money, you know, because even if I need anything, you know, my mom, she's going to do this. And she's like, I just used to be like, man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, that's how I used to feel about it. I used to be like, shut the fuck up. So yeah. anyway, they used to have these big, heavy covers that you would have to take off with the crane. And one day we, we get into like a, a little bit of a heated discussion. And I kind of like blow it off because I see it's getting real. But she goes out there to take these covers off and all this dust like blowing her face. And I'm talking about she's already dark, but like this dirt really makes her super dark. Mm -hmm. So she come in. I was like, damn, you really got that shit all on your face. She was like, what shit? And I was like, oh, you know that shit. I don't even know why the fuck I even implied like. Like a sexual type. But at first she didn't say nothing. Because I don't think she like caught on to it. She sat there for a minute. She was like. Wait hold on. Hold on. What exactly are you trying to say. That's on my fucking face. Because you obviously ain't talking about the dirt. That's from out there. Man I just got up and walked. I ain't even had like a comeback. Or like how to fix. I just got up and walked the fuck out. She was so mad. She put her shit on. With all this dirt on her face still. She didn't even clean this shit. She came directly chasing after me. Like nah. You need to. But I knew the, I knew the cameras was out there. So all while she doing all this. All you see is me walking. <laughs> She coming behind me doing all of this shit, and yeah. I just was pointing to her yeah. like, uh-huh. girl, you finna get fired, <laughs> not me, because it looked like you harassing me. Right. She, oh, I was not dumb. Do I had 10 years. She had a year. She must not have knew how my department ran. Oh, I'm talking about I was God. out of there, but I knew she had me because I'm like, I was being an asshole just because I didn't care for her. She was getting on my nerves, so I'm like, yeah. shit, I didn't put my foot in my mouth. She got me. But when she chased after me, I was like, oh, I got you. Now, I'm talking about oh she she had the black woman shit. She was, and she was cussing me out. I was like. Me? Oh, no. What? Uh, mm, eh. <laughs> she <laughs> never playing. pulled it, though. She never, like, yeah. she didn't pull playing harassment. Too. But if she would have, oh, no, I had that already wrapped up. Oh, but in the beginning, oh, I was scared of shit. I was like, motherfucker, I'm fired. Like, what am I going to I got, I got a son. Why did I do this? <laughs> I got like, a son. I got a son. Like, you instantly go to the responsible shit when you fucked up. I got a son. I got a mortgage. I can't get fired from this good job. But it happened, though. So, yeah. yeah steal me. Nah. If I do a whole episode of just people that's in the steal me, people oh. would never believe what literally. Because it's a soap opera now. People don't believe it. Like, they just think, oh, you yeah. in this place with all this fire shooting. Never. It is not. Motherfuckers is on iPads and just phones. Just male dominating because I I damn near don't even want to come on there and talk about it. Yeah, come on on there. Talk. Tell, tell us your experience. I, mm, no, what? Tell us your experience. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. I need a little more time because if some of them see this, I'm friends with some of them on there. And I don't. I mean, it, it, I would never talk. <laughs> Why not? Some people need no, to hear the nasty no, meal. I tell them about themselves. Look, and I'm very direct person. So if they've ever did or said, you know, I tell them right then mm-hmm. and there. I didn't have to shut a few things down. You know, my first back then, you know, I don't know. But no, 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 no. I mean, it's just, it's very different. It's just like that in the boat, uh, the meal, anywhere, for anywhere yeah. where it is just more ratio of men to women mm-hmm. Woo. yeah especially if yeah. you look like some yes if you look like some it's on that's like, why I, I stay out of that i stay out of that i'm not 
Mm-mm. Oh, so they harassing you? Oh, well, I've gotten oh, harassed. Okay. I ain't gonna lie about that. I've gotten harassed. You know they and they don't care. They don't care what they got going on. They don't give a damn. They don't give a damn. Do you hear me? They don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I know. <laughs> They're the ones that will work 16 just not to go just home. So those are the particular people that you're talking about. I know. Yeah, they work 16 just not to go home. Damn. But don't want to leave their wife, though, because they know she's going to get half of that pension. And Come they try to care. hold on to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I know. It goes on. I'm snitching. Yeah, yep. I'm dropping down. Mm-hmm. I know it. Yeah, I'm dropping down. Man, I know it's guys that literally died yes yes because they just didn't want to give that they're not doing it Mm -hmm. they had three other lives and they still ain't giving that first wife shit they won't take it to their grave yeah these motherfuckers crazy i ain't mad at them because i think that's bullshit though now don't get me wrong wow don't get me wrong because i've had this conversation don't get me wrong if you are providing a lifestyle for a stay-at-home mom, I understand. But if she goes to work, you ain't work not nan fucking double, not nan three to eleven, none of this shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you didn't go through what I had to go through. The cold people think they always just hot. Oh, when baby, it's I'll winter time, oh, it's a motherfucker. Damn, if I got to give my husband half. No, yeah, you're right. I changed my <laughs> mind. Yeah, yeah, it should be like that. You're right. <laughs> If he, I pray he don't get a pension. If it don't work out, he gets half. No. He gets, uh, uh, no, I don't yes, yes, no. yes. He gets half. Mm-hmm. No, and, no, and no. I already know if you done heard the stories where they tell you, no. oh, put X amount in there because I'm telling you, you could, you could have over a million dollars by the time you, yeah, give him half of that. Mm-hmm. He had to put up with your Dang mess. It. Give it to him. Oh my God. Give it to him. I appreciate you coming on here, lady. Before I do close it out, is there any shout outs you want to give? Is there any closing remarks you want to give? Anything that you want to shout your business out? Whatever you want to do, it's your time to shine. Oh, just thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming. You know, uh, shout out to tomorrow. It's my last day at work, and then I get a couple of off days. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Shoot, because a lady is tired. You need them. Okay. No, but... uh, just uh you know shout out to everybody make look i follow this lady named tabitha brown she is a vegan beautiful black lady and she says the most beautiful thing every time she gets off the camera and she always say have a good day and even if you can't just don't go ruin nobody else's and that. that is beautiful because we don't always have good days and i just feel like just don't go try to ruin nobody else's. You know, go take some time for yourself. Go relax. Whatever. Do some things. Try to get your life together. Whatever. Be the best you. That mm-hmm. That is what I live by. Just being the best me. Ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. So, shout out to my friend Q. Shout out to my baby. About to do prom next week. That's right. I'm so prom. excited. I know that's right. That's it. I know that's right. Shout out to my family. Hey, y'all. Shout out to the family. Shout out to Will. That's what I'm talking about, girl. Let's turn your mic up another, you know, all the way up. My guy, I'm proud of him. I appreciate that, lady. I appreciate that. This is what it is. This is what it's about. I'm trying to take it to another level. Oh, it's going. Literally. You ain't trying. You're doing it. I appreciate it. For those that, again, that want to support the Thought Provoking Podcast, you can hit the cash app, Thought Provoking 88. Go on ahead and support. For those that have already done it, I definitely appreciate y'all. Plan to keep giving y'all top-notch quality content. Shout out to my boy Malcolm Jones with Jones Management. Um, shout out to my babies. I ain't shouted my babies mm-hmm. out on the podcast in a while. All four of them. Yes, you know I got four now, you know. You got, got two girls now. Yeah. yeah see, you know. Oh, you, you so busy high on the hog now, getting all that steel meal stop, money, stop, 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 being stop. that entrepreneur on the side. About. Like us little oh, folks, no, you done no, forgot no, all about no, us. No. You don't check in with us. See, I, I understand. Yeah, okay. Now, I ain't even going to go there because I'm going to just take what you said. Exactly. You yep. got to roll with it. Yeah, you got to roll with babies, it. Yeah. Shout out to the babies, man. You know, <laughs> until the next episode of Thought Provoking Podcast, <laughs> we are out. <laughs>